Hello and welcome, Blake Rudis here with Everyday HDR and HDRinsider.com. And today what I wanna talk about is creating, saving, and loading smart presets in Adobe Camera Raw. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna discuss creating a smart or good preset, how that starts, how you need to save that so that it remains smart and good. And then we'll even talk about how you import some others because I have a bundle of presets that you're able to download and bring right into your Adobe Camera Raw when you watch this tutorial. So here's the before, here's the after, we get a automated effect that happens and this will not affect any of our basic settings. So let's jump into this because there's a lot to learn. In order to make a good preset in Adobe Camera Raw, you have to think like a good preset in Adobe Camera Raw. What I mean by that is you don't want to make your preset so that it affects things that don't happen to all the images unless it's done for a creative purpose. So what the heck does that mean? Well, up here you have your temperature and your white balance, and you also have your basic settings, your exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now these areas, I wouldn't necessarily want to be affected in every one of the presets that I create unless I'm doing it for a specific image. So let's say like uh, I wanted the blacks to be kind of washed out and kind of a matte look. I could increase that. That would be an artistic or a creative effect that I want that, that preset to have within it. Now other areas that you can adjust would be something like the clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Let's go ahead and put this into practice and I'll talk about saving it so that you understand what you should be saving when you're doing this. So let's say with this photograph, we wanted to have a washed out sort of matte look to it that has a blue and cream tint to it. So there's kind of a cream where the highlights are and a blue where the blacks are. First thing we need to do is go to our split toning. So with that highlight, if you look right here, we want this to be the saturation color down here to be kind of like a cream. So we move this over until it starts to turn a creamish color. So that looks about cream right there. And let's go ahead and take this slider and move this until it turns into a dark blue. Now you're looking at the image and nothing is happening. That's because the saturation of this hue that we've applied to the set, the highlights and the shadows has not increased. So it's at a zero level. We haven't added any color to those areas. So if we increase the saturation, we're now adding blue to those black areas. So let's just increase that to about 40 and we'll come up here to the saturation up here and do about the same. So now we have like a 50-50 balance between blacks uh, being adjusted by the blues and the highlights being adjusted by the whites. But let's say we want a little bit more of that color temperature of the yellow to come through. We can increase the balance over here to the right. If you move it to the right, it's gonna favor your highlights. If you move it to the left, it's gonna favor the color for your shadow. So let's move that to the right and just kind of favor some of that warmth. Now the blacks aren't very washed out. So let's go back to the basic settings and create some creative effects with the basic settings. We'll increase the blacks up here so that the blacks start to get a little bit washed out. And then we'll also diffuse this a little bit by dropping the clarity. So most people hike this up to get that grunge look. Well, if you bring it down, it gives you a diffused look. So we'll bring that down just a slight bit like negative 10. And then with the vibrance, vibrance is kind of like a saturation that only affects uh, the most prominent color. So it typically likes to b amplify colors, but uh, it tries to protect skin tones in the same light so that your skin tones don't get affected too much by that vibrance. So let's move the vibrance down just a slight bit and we'll leave it at that. So that's a pretty good preset. Let's see what this looks like on the rest of our images here. So we'll grab one image over here and we'll just scroll down and press shift. What I've done is I've taken some pictures of my boys and then also brought in some pictures of uh, the uh, landscape images that I've taken to kind of show you how these presets work on multiple images. So we'll go ahead and press synchronize. That's gonna synchronize all of these with the settings above. So press synchronize. It's gonna ask us, what do we wanna synchronize? Well, we can just go ahead and synchronize everything at this point. Normally I would uncheck the things I did not want it to synchronize, but at this point I haven't done anything to the photos below. So we'll just press okay. And that will sync all of the settings so that these all get that same type of color temperature adjustment to it. See how that works? So look at this one and it's doing a pretty good job even on our landscape photos of giving us a good kind of color wash or color grading to the overall image as a whole. And what this means is that it's not affecting any of our exposure, our contrast, our highlights, our shadows, or whites. And check this out. So 
I already have this preset saved. It's in the bundle of presets that I'm going to give you. But let me go ahead and increase the contrast on this. Uh, I'll go ahead and increase the highlights and I'll drop, I'll increase the shadows a little bit, just a little bit. And if I go to my apply a preset and I go to the blue and cream, you notice that it doesn't adjust these settings. All it's adjusting are my blacks, my clarity, my vibrance, my saturation, and if we go to split toning, my split toning. So a good preset thinks like a good preset. Let's look at another preset that I have in here. We'll go to this, uh, let's go to this cyan and red. So now we have a cyan and red split toning that's happening here. Again, it has not affected our exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, or whites. It's a good preset. It works like a good preset. We made the good preset thinking about it in terms of being a good preset. Can't tell you how many times I've seen presets online that adjust these basic settings here. Now, unless you're doing it for creative purposes, you don't want it to do that because the dynamic range in every photo is different. So typically I will leave these all the same and only save the certain things in that preset that I want to affect in the image. So how do we save a, a preset to make it a good preset that thinks and works and operates like a good preset? Well, we're going to go right up here and we're going to go to save settings. Now by default, everything's going to be checked here and it's a chaotic nightmare when you look at it and you're probably thinking, what the heck are all these checkboxes and I'm pretty much done. Well, it's really a lot easier than it seems. You have all of your basic settings right here, just like in your basic panel. And then you have your curve settings and you have your detail. This would be any of your noise reduction and this would be any of your color toning and then any of the profiles that you chose for your image and then into your creative effects and then any camera calibration that was done. So you can actually change these subsets here. So you can only have it uh, be the details. So let's say you have a really good sharpening action or a preset that you want to create. You only select the details. That way, if you ever use that preset, all you have to do is apply it to that one image and it's not going to affect any of the basic settings. So you don't have to worry about it. So what we need to do here is create a custom subset. We'll go to uh, check none so that nothing is checked. And what we want to save are only the things that we did to this particular photograph. So what we did was we did the split toning. We did some vibrance. We did some clarity. We did some blacks. We did not touch the saturation, the whites or anything else. So that's all we want to save here. So when I go to save, I'll save this as uh, cream and blue. So now anytime I want to use this in the future, it, when I apply that preset, let's just go ahead and select all these images and we will uh, just go to reset camera raw defaults. So there'll be nothing on these images. So now let's apply that preset, the preset we just made, which was cream and blue. So now if I make adjustments to this image, if I drop the exposure, increase the contrast, let's just play with some things real quick. And then I go into that apply preset and go to the cream and blue. It doesn't affect any of my basic settings. It only affects the ones that were implanted in that preset when I created that preset. So anytime you create a preset, you want to save it, make sure that you uh, save it accordingly with the only the things that you did to the image that you want for the creative effect rather than the basic settings. So that you're not making any dynamic range uh, adjustments to an image that doesn't have the same dynamic range for the preset that you created. So at this point, we've talked about creating a good preset. We've talked about saving a good preset. Now let's talk about how we import a preset from say somebody else, like the presets that I have here for you. What you're going to do is there's a couple ways you can do this. You can click right here and go to load settings. And then from there, you can navigate to the uh, Blake Rudis's presets that I'm going to give you. And you can just double click on one. Well, that gave us that cyan and red wash, but the problem is it it didn't save it. So if we go into our presets, let's say we go to apply preset, we don't see it here. That preset is not here. So how do we get those presets in there? Well, this is the way uh, I like to do it because there are a lot of different ways that you can get to the uh, plugins and actions and presets within Photoshop, but the best way so that you know exactly where that those are being saved is to actually go to save settings and let's just press save. I'm not going to press OK or save right now. What I'm going to do is click up here. Now I'm working in a Windows machine. If I press Control C on this 
part of the, the, the folder up here. So the navigation area, press control C to copy this. All right, now I'm just going to close this. I'm not going to save anything. All I wanted to know was exactly where those, those presets are being saved. Now I can, oh, I can go into my windows Explorer. I can grab here, control V that gets me exactly to where I need to be for where all those presets are. So now what I can do is take that Blake Rudis's presets that I have here for you, highlight them all, drag them and drop them right into this settings folder and you're done. So we can close that settings folder. We can close this Blake Rudis preset folder. When we look here, we go to the uh, apply preset. It's not going to be in here yet. The reason why is because we actually need to close Adobe camera raw and then reopen it. And then those settings will be there. So let's go ahead and do that. So when I bring these images back in to Adobe camera raw and I click over here and go to apply preset, guess what? They're all there. So one of my favorite little cool ones here is the sepia toned old school look. So look at that pretty cool preset there. So you can get really creative with these presets and make some really awesome presets on your own. I'm giving you about 10 presets here that you can have and play with at your leisure, but don't let those be where you stop. Now that you understand that creating a good preset means thinking like a good preset and only saving those presets with the things that you want that to affect that image, those creative things like the saturation, the vibrance, the clarity, and pretty much leaving the basic settings alone, unless you're doing it for a creative purpose. So you're not affecting the dynamic range, saving those presets to make sure that the preset that you did just create is now saved properly with all the correct boxes checked so that you're not checking boxes that you didn't do any effect on. Why is that important? Well, let's say that we did some noise reduction on this image. We did a bunch of different things with noise reduction, camera profiles, and then we uh, applied a preset that had all of those set. It would default them to whatever the preset had set instead of just those creative effects. So it's really important to make sure that you, when you save your presets, you're saving them accordingly. We then talk about loading and importing the settings in. The best way to do that is to go in as if you're going to save the preset, find out exactly where that folder is that it's pulling those presets from and copying it, pasting it into a new Windows Explorer window, and then just dragging and dropping those presets in. My name is Blake Rudis with Everyday HDR and HDR Insider. Really hope you enjoyed this tutorial because uh, there's a lot of power in Adobe Camera Raw with presets, and I, I really just want you to realize that. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, share it, pass it along, because I'm guaranteed there's somebody else out here who could really benefit from this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching.